Mario's probably hurt. Everyone's in prison. The Mushroom Kingdom will be destroyed if things continue the way they're going. Something must be done. If only somebody could help me. <laughs> My dear Princess Peach, how are you doing this fine day? It's no use waiting for Mario this time, my dear. We're so high above the sky right now, even Mario doesn't have a chance of reaching us up here. You know, Princess, as long as I have this star rod, no one in the Mushroom Kingdom can touch me. You know the power that grants everyone's wishes. It's mine. Isn't that just wonderful? <laughs> Imagine what it's like down in your kingdom. Your subjects must be so upset because their wishes aren't being granted. Oh, how delightful. They deserve it for the way they've treated us Koopas over the years. If you, you know, want anything, all you need to do is ask me, Princess. I can grant wishes. Of course, I'll only grant requests that I like. Anyway, think about it. Take care, Princess Peach. Enjoy your stay here. You watch yourself, Princess. You better not cause trouble. <laughs> Oh, please. If only somebody could help me. Huh? Hello, Princess Peach. Pleased to meet you. My name is Twink. But you're... You're a Starkin, aren't you? How'd you get here? I keep from Star Haven to grant your wish. It's our job to grant wishes, you know. Oh, you came because I wish that somebody could help me? Yes, of course. Oh, that's just great. Thank you so much for coming. Here's my wish. Go right now and take that Star Rock back from Bowser, okay? Think you could do it? Eh, uh, sorry. That's a little much for a novice star like me. Maybe one of those honorable star spirits from Star Haven can grant a wish like that. I'm so sorry. Please ask for something easy. Something a small star can do. Then, can you take me away from here? Everyone in my castle has been captured, and I have to save them all as soon as possible. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't grant that wish either, I'm afraid. Actually, I just got called up to the sky a day ago, so I can't do big wishes yet. If I were a more splendid star, maybe I could actually help. It's alright. Don't be sad, Twig. Mario will definitely do something to save us all. He's probably coming right now. Oh, Twig! Do you think you could find Mario? I want you to give this to him. It's a lucky star, isn't it? Okay, I'll do it. Princess Peach, I'll fly to the Mushroom Kingdom just as quick as I can. Oh, wait, Twink. Wait one second. Can you also... Please tell Mario that... I'm fine and he shouldn't worry, okay? Can you tell him that? Of course! I'll tell him your exact words, Princess Peach, definitely! Now, don't despair. I'll be back soon, so stay safe until I return, okay? Mario, where are you? Well, 
Well, at least we know Princess Peach is fine. And we're on our way down from Shooting Star Summit, but before I do that, I actually changed my mind a little bit. I'm gonna go back to Merlo and actually get the Chill Out Badge, just for the sake of showing it off. Besides, we're gonna come across a lot more Star Peaks in the future, so it's not like that we'll be low on that amount anytime soon. So hey, Merlo. I've actually changed my mind about that Chill Out Badge I want. Exchange for three, uh, three star pieces. The number of BP we need is two. I think we have the exact amount. If not, then we just equip that for later. Yeah, that's what I thought. Only two badge points. I'll take the hammer throw over that any day. But I will show that off in the future. At least when we get more BP. Which I did say I will attribute that as our next level up. So I'm gonna hold myself to that promise. So we'll just keep heading our way back out of Shooting Star Summit and en route back to the Mushroom Kingdom. Or actually, not the Mushroom Kingdom, the Toad Town. Oh, right before we got blocked on the head like that. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm in a huge hurry. Oh, it's. You're Mario, aren't you? Thank the stars I found you. How do you do? I'm Twig. Princess Peach asked me to bring something to you. Uh, yes, here it is. Here, this is it. Take it. Got the lucky star, a star-shaped pendant to let you use the action command. <laughs> about time, I felt kind of naked without that, not gonna lie. That's the lucky star for Princess Peach. Now that's yours, you can use the action command. May I take a moment to explain what that is? Sure. Alright, let me explain. Let me see. Uh, hang on. You, behind Mario. Would you mind helping me demonstrate something? Me? My name's Gubario. Of course I'll help. Well, Mario, Gubario, let's begin. So, this is a... Mario, come on! <laughs> Can't you stay on your feet for like two seconds at an important time like this? Man, you really gotta work on your footing. Like, a lot. So, choose a jump command and decide which end you want to attack. Well, hopefully Mario won't trip over himself when we have to perform doing this. <laughs> so you see that prompt down there, once you sign the enemy, the explanation of that action command will appear. So up until now, we've been fighting pretty standard-like, uh, but with this action command, this will change a lot for the battle. Like with timing our jump attack, uh, just press A before stopping the enemy. At this exact moment, and we can do a double jump. When you see dice appear, it means you successfully use the action command. When you do, you'll increase the amount of damage you do. Okay, now this time, Gubario, you try to attack Mario. Okay, here it comes, Mario. And conversely, we can also press A just before an attack strikes us to defend ourselves from it. Yes, you can successfully use the action command. This will reduce the amount of damage you receive. Often you'll have to use different techniques to make use of the action command. It depends on the attack. Try attacking by hammer. So this also applies for a hammer too, but uh, the action command will play out a little differently depending on what attack that you choose to use. For the hammer, we have to move the control stick to the left. Like so. And then when that star comes up, that's when you let go. It's a very easy to time. You will have no problem mastering that at all. Now, do you stay on the inside out the action command? Yes, I do, Twig. Let's practice a bit to make sure that you master how to use it properly. Nah, I'm confident my ability to do that. That's it, Armar. You're a quick learner. Well, I guess that's all I can teach you. <laughs> I thought Twig do like a little angry dancer. Maybe he wanted us to <laughs> practice more often. Once you use the, understand how to use the action command properly, you'll be even more powerful. Terrific! You'll be much tougher now, now. Oh, that's a magic Koopa. What? It can't be. Were you following me? What a foolish star kid. I knew that if I followed you, I'd find Mario. If I defeat Mario right now, I'll be famous. I'll tell Kabi Koopa. 
She'll shower me with praise. She'll give me a raise. Hey, don't cry, buddy. That's my thing, not yours. I do that by accident sometimes. That's my shtick. So now we'll put our newly acquired action command to use. And this applies to all attacks. That's including badges, if I'm correct. If I'm not correct on that, then that means that badges might be able to be useful without needing to use for action commands. It's just regular text that will need the actions to be used on. So when dice appears, you can defend ourselves from an attack as well, but not all attacks are going to be deflected just because you managed to defend yourself. This all depends on like the stats of the enemies too. That's where the attack and defense comes in. If your defense is, I think, lower than the enemy's attack, then you will take damage even if you manage to defend yourselves from an attack. And I probably should have tattled that guy too. It's kind of bad. <laughs> I might just do that later on when I have to edit this. I know that you'll be able to defeat Bowser. Is there a way? Yeah, you can press Z to... Uh, Go back to the previous text box to look at what the previous line was said. Just press A to go back. I'm gonna return to Princess Peach's side. I'm not strong enough to really help her, but at least I can tell her you're okay. Well, Mario, see you later! Oh dear! I almost forgot to tell you the message for Princess Peach. I'm alright, so don't worry about me. That's exactly what she said. I get the feeling, though, that she's very lonely. Anyway, I'll do my best to help the both of you. But please be brave. You must save Princess Peach. There he goes. Back to Bowser's castle. What a brave little guy. Okay, Mario, let's get down to business. You said it, Gubario. I really like Twink. He's really cute and also very helpful, too. So, if there's anyone that's going to be sticking by Princess Peach throughout this entire quest, I'm glad it's going to be him. But even though he is a, a novice star spirit, still. Better than nothing. Also, he's just really adorable. I love his character sprite so much. Anytime he's just really happy and uh, shows like some sort of positivity, just... Ugh. It's too much sometimes, man. It's too much. I can't deny it. I really like Twink a lot. Merlin was looking for you. He lives in that in the house with the spinning roof. Oh, sure. Now old man Merlin wants to speak to me since I'm, I guess, conveniently back in Toad Town. <laughs> so we have for Merlin to call somebody over to his house. He's a bit eccentric. Yeah, I kind of got that from when I tried to enter his house last time. But I want to check over here for a second. I wonder if I speak to these guys. Uh, you don't want to go out there. It's way too dangerous. Uh, going to come close fortress would be a huge mistake. <laughs> definitely, definitely don't go. Most of all, though, you shouldn't go ask Old Man Merlin for help. <laughs> that would be really bad news for us. I mean, for you. Don't even think about it. Well, that's oddly suspicious if I do say so myself. Uh, let's keep repeating themselves. You could actually speak to them before we left for Shooting Star Summit. I went to go back and check afterwards, and it turns out you can speak to them before you left for the summit as well. I was just afraid something was going to happen when you do when you do speak to those toads, because they do look really suspicious. Oh my god, I'm fairly brilliant. Oh! That was really rude. <laughs> I thought he was still being so cranky about wanting to let someone into his house. Why is someone sleeping on, in front of my house? Wait a minute. That face seems very familiar to me. I hope you recognize it from the face print I left on your door. Oh, maybe... No. Yes, it must be. You're Mario. I've been waiting for you. You should have come earlier. <laughs> well, you're here now. Come in. I tried to come in earlier. You just wouldn't let me in. You'd be a cranky old man. That's what you're trying to be. Where to begin? My name is Merlin. I am a wizard. When I was reading the stars the other day, an oracle came to me. What I discovered is very important, and it concerns you. But before I tell you about it, there are other things of which I must speak. It's a very long story, but I'll try to shorten it. Where should I start? 
It was in the old days. One of my ancestors was up on Shooting Star Summit as usual. But one day it happened. Suddenly, a great, a pure knight, standing face to face. In the far away, the pious was raised me up. It was amazing. I was still so young then. I believed it. But our hearts were. And then, so. So many dots that it caused. The screen to fade to black and Mario to fall asleep! Lord must know how much time was a passive. Really was speaking for that long. And that is all that matters. Oh, hey! Mario! Were you listening to me? Uh, yeah, sure, I was. Heard every word of it. Well, alright. So, anyway, that is why I am able to help you. If you get lost during your adventure, you can come to me. I can predict the path you should take for a small price. Right now, your main goal must be to save Princess Peach as quickly as humanly possible. But, according to my second sight, your path must first take you to the Great Fortress of the Cooper Bros, as I expected. To reach the Cooper Bros Fortress, head east of the road in front of the Toad House. And that's just about it, right? Come again, strange toads blocking the east side of Toad Town? That shouldn't be. That's ridiculous! Such a thing has never ha been heard of. Never! I'll get to the bottom of this. Follow me over there. I'll see what's going on. Cool. We need to investigate what those toads are about. <laughs> so I think it's pretty obvious what those guys' agenda is actually about. Discovered a mysterious old man. His name is Merlin. He uses magical powers to look into the future. I've listened to his stories before and they're really long. I try to pay attention, but sometimes I fall asleep. I get the feeling. Trust me, I was there. You were there too, you saw me fall asleep. Still, his fortune teller is supposedly right on. I don't know personally, but Makuba told me. I told you that you can't pass. Take off. Hmm. You are toads, are you? Uh, we don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, what gives? Ask anyone. We're just cute, ordinary toads hanging out. Reveal your true selves! And sure enough, they were just toads in disguise. Hmm, <laughs> just as I thought. You're the Koopa Bros. How, how'd you guess it was us? We're perfectly disguised. Shucks. Black, yellow, green. We retreat for now. Mario, those imposters were none other than the Cooper Bros. You must pursue them to their hideouts, the Cooper Bros Fortress. Oh, Mario, there's one part of your fortune I haven't revealed. To get to the Cooper Bros Fortress, you'll need help from a blue shelled Koopa. This is strange pro protent. Protent? It's a weird word. In Koopa Village, you must find something that will clear it up. I must return home now. Her house is just right across the street and... Wow, he must move really fast for an old guy because he went back to his house, like, so fast. What would happen if we go back inside since we have total access to his house now? What happens we shall go back, yada yada yada. What happens if we speak across a desk? Want me to predict the path you should take? It will cost five coins, just as I thought. But we know where to go anyway, so we don't need his service for now. I guess that is the way to use the fortune telling ability if you need to find out where to go next in terms of the main story. That's what I was thinking of before we went to Merlovely's house. So Merlovely would speak on where to go in other places. Regardless, this leads us. This leads us into going to Chapter 1, the Stormy Cooper Bros Fortress. Now if we hang around for a little bit, about 10 seconds, something will happen. We're on cue! This is the classic Super Mario Brothers music that plays if you hang around the chapter screen for long enough. This also applies to the prologue too before. I want to show it now because I figured it was most relevant when we were going to an actual chapter of the game. It's something you wouldn't think of actually looking for, but if you hang around long enough and just wait for a while, 
Then you'll find this little chicken with kebab. It's a really nice touch. And now we're on our way to Cooper Bros Fortress. Oh, right before we almost got assaulted by a Koopa. I might take off that effects sound after a little while because I imagine it will get annoying eventually. Anyways, <laughs> not in the most dignified position. This is a Koopa Troopa. Everyone knows Koopa Troopas are Bowser's followers. HP 4, Attack 1, and Defense 1. Their shells are hard. If you can flip them over, the defense power will fall at zero and it will become much easier for you to defeat them. You can flip them over with a power block or with a jump attack like we just did, as by proxy of our first strike. And when they are on their shells, then the Koopa is uh, completely defenseless. You can attack them to give a lot of damage. Thank you for Goobas, we can defend them, uh, defend against them to uh, not take any damage at all. So just keep that in mind, you need a, to execute a double jump essentially to immobilize the Koopa Troopa. They will need to use their turn to self right themselves, and when that turn is used up, they have to wait till their turn comes around again for them to attack. So that's something you should keep in mind to exploit it if you need to find advantage against the Koopa, which is not that hard to do. And with our action command, we can now take out these regular Goombas no sweat in just one move. Just a little time is all you need to wipe them out. Apart from the Spike Goomba, of course, because, you know, that Spike on his head might cause problems for us. Speaking of the Spike Goomba, this is the first game. Ah, as we see one just appear right before us. Again, good timing. Actually, if we could use the uh, action command, this might give us to do more damage. Yeah, it does! We can do more damage with our action command hammer attack now. That's really cool. And the action command also applies to partners too, just in case you're curious about that. As I was saying about the Spike Koopa, this game was actually their debut in the Marioverse. So if you wonder where their first appearance was, this was the game that they first appeared in. And with that red crate, we got the Dizzy Attack Badge. Delivers a blow that makes an enemy dizzy and unable to move. Dizzy is another stats effect that you'll come across in your battles in this game too. It's something you can use to your advantage, to your advantage if you need to immobilize the enemy for a moment. That's provided if the effect will actually be activated. And here we have the Fright Jar that makes a scary spirit appear and chase some enemies away. This is a way that you can chase enemies out of battle, but if you do that, then you won't get any experience from chasing enemies out of the battlefield. So it really is a catch-22 if you want to use, use something like that. This, however, is a lot more useful. The Power Block flips shell enemies and inflicts two damage force on all foes. Speaking of which, we got a Koopa Trooper right here. I will use it on this guy because we got an easy way to take him out with our skills alone. But I guess I will demonstrate the hammer throw first off. We'll damage the defenseless Koopa Troopa and then I'll show the hammer throw. So hit one enemy with a hammer no matter where they are. This is very useful to, t to attack airborne enemies too. Just hold the stick back like before, and when the prompt comes up, then you can throw it. And these guys can be defended perfectly from our action command too. That's nice. Yeah! We're doing really good in the battle so far. Ah! That's where the uh, switch was. I was not really expecting that to come up, honestly. I was just gonna hit it just for the sake of it. Alright, so we'll head on past this bridge. I see something up there. Looks like, yep, a Spike Gooba. So you can't see those guys all lying on, on crates. So that's something you don't usually see in this game. Like, come up that often. I didn't think you could actually see them when they were lying on top of the block, though. Let's do nothing by hitting our strategy maneuver. And we'll just take him out with a hammer, no sweat. I would have cut that out, but I didn't realize that you could see the enemy lying on the block like we just saw. Doesn't matter though, wasn't that tough to take on? Aha! 
Alright, alright, alright. We're just coming across more of the same goods we faced before and just Koopa Troopers thrown in. That's pretty much all there is to it on this path. Hmm, I wonder if I can get that. I don't think so, but I'm gonna try anyways. Oh, I can't. I'm actually blocked by an invisible wall. Alright, so I'll have to come back for that later. I didn't think you actually need to wait till later for that. I thought you could just jump in willy nilly. Judging by the gap though, I'm pretty sure it was academic that we couldn't make that jump anyways. Now more of this to take on. We're still just essentially grinding for the most part right now, but it's still adding to our star point counter. Which I'm not going to complain about at all. After all, experience is something that is very useful in RPGs. Okay, so uh, you go down to go to Koopa Village. It's going to be wise to do that. I know you can swing around these guys. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> You'll get this little, little jingle to play, but more importantly, we'll get hearts popping out of these things too. <laughs> it's a really nice touch that uh, I don't think a lot of people really know about. Uh, it's, certainly, I, certain, it's something that I certainly didn't know about myself uh, until I had to walk a look up a Let's Play of the game like a few years back. That's the honey syrup, gives us five uh, FP back. That'll be very useful in case we're running out of FP. So I'll try to be conservative about that all the same. So just head down the south path. Bash these in. I thought there'd be something inside one of those uh, blocks. I guess not. But this should take us, yep, to Koopa Village. Can it be? Are you Mario? Welcome to Koopa Village. I really wish we could really welcome you, but we're in big trouble. Can't you see what kind of madness is going on? This village is in an uproar because of the fuzzies. You do know what fuzzies are like, don't you, Mario? They look like this. Hmm, interesting. Mean guys, they're really naughty. Oh, and just as... Just on cue, the fuzzy made us move. Oh no, stupid fuzzy! Get back here with my shell! Well, it seems that Koopa Village is definitely in a bit of a pickle, but we're going to hold that off until next time. I know we should help that guy right away, but I think Mar will be more amused by just watching the fuzzy chaos going around for a while, especially with that poor guy. He was being so nice to us too, and this is how Mario treats him. Man, Mario's kind of, kind of a jerk, more of a jerk than you would need to believe. Anyways, next time, we will clear up this fuzzy crisis in Koopa Village and try to find this... Blue Shell Koopa that Merlin was talking about in said village. Until we meet again, farewell for now. <laughs>